Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. I am sure you are all enjoying some of those interesting problems. Let me discuss more problems today once again. Let me begin with inorganic problem related to phosphorus NMR. I will just uh, look into the problem here. Consider all possible isomers that could be obtained for the eight membered ring compound P4, N4, Cl4, PH4 and indicate the ideal 31 p NMR spectrum expected for each. I have already given the spectra here, but let me explain. So this is cyclotetraphosphazine because we have uh, alternate double bond. This is cyclotetraphosphazine. Usually the parent compound has uh, eight chlorine atoms, two chlorine atoms on each phosphorus, and then four chlorine atoms have been replaced by phenyl groups. So we have this composition P4, N4, Cl4, PH4, and one can start writing all possible isomers. You can also make an attempt. I think only five isomers are possible here. And then by using different arrangement of four chlorine atoms and four phenyl groups here. And the first one is here like this. And if you just look into it, the equivalent phosphorus atoms have given the same color here. So two blue are there in the first one and then two red are there, they are chemically and magnetically equivalent. And the second one also same thing, but their positions are little different. They are close to each other and they are opposite to each other and one bond apart. Whereas here these two red phosphorus are identical, these two phosphorus are identical. And then in the third one, we have one phosphorus has two phenyl groups and one has two chlorine and other remaining have one each of chlorine as well as phenyl. And in this fashion, if you just see these two are identical and then P red and P blue are again unique. And then if you look into this one, all of the phosphorus atoms have one each of chlorine as well as phenyl. And this one is very symmetrical molecule and the chemical and magnetical equivalence of all phosphorus atoms is same. As a result, it is expected to show a single resonance here. And now the last isomer possible is we have something like this. We have a diphenyl phosphorus here and opposite to that one we have phenyl chlorine. And then here, of course, uh, eight membered ring you should remember it is not planar, it is little bit of puckered one. Only six membered ring cyclotriphosphazine is planar. And in this case, we have all four phosphorus atoms are unique, all different, all are chemically and magnetically very different. So first let us look into the first one here. First one, and these two are identical, they couple equally with uh, red ones to show a triplet. And then the blue ones will also show a triplet here. First one, yes, two triplets. And the second one, if you look into it here, this one and this one looks identical, but they are different because one is here, P1 is here. And these two couple with uh, these two to show a triplet. And then these two would also couple with this one to show a triplet here. And then if you look into three here, these two are identical, but these two are different. First, this one would couple to form a triplet, and then each triplet will be split into doublets. So we will see this here, two doublets, doublet of triplets here, and then this will couple with first a doublet and then another doublet. So this, if you look into here, it is doublet here, and again it is a doublet here. So these three signals are here. This is the ratio if you look into it, 1 is to 1 is to 2 integration. And then all are different and the long range coupling is ruled out. So two bond coupling is possible here. First it couples with this one, a doublet, and then it couples with this one, a doublet of doublet. And similarly red one will couple with this one doublet, and then this is doublet, red one. And pink one here, this couples with the first blue, and then the green one, doublet of doublet. And similarly, green would couple with first with this one and then this one it, it gives. So it gives four sets of doublet of doublets. First one will give uh, two sets of triplets. This one would give again two sets of triplets, very similar to uh, one. Uh, whereas this one will show triplet and then this one will show a triplet. Whereas middle ones will show doublet of doublet here, pink one. And then this is all are equivalent, it shows a singlet and then we get. So this is how you can draw 
the splitting pattern for all five isomers and understand. For example, when we uh, take uh, this octachloro compound P4N4 say Cl8 and if we add phenyl lithium four equivalents, we do not know what kind of isomer we are going to get and probably we may get a mixture of isomers and if you look into the mixture by simply looking into the coupling constants and the splitting pattern, we should be able to identify how many isomers are formed and also we can also do quantification in what ratio they have formed. So, that would also give you some idea about the overall yield and then probably we can alter the reaction condition uh, to make one or two in their purest form. Another problem is there. Now, this is with respect to cyclotriphosphazine N3P3 Cl6. In that one, two fluorine atoms have been replaced by two fluorine atoms. As a result, we have N3P3 Cl4 F2 here. And then again, one can draw 31 PNMR for these compounds after writing all possible isomers. Here only two isomers are possible. One is both the fluorine atoms are geminal and the same phosphorus atom or they can be on two different phosphorus atoms. Two fluorines can be on the same phosphorus or on the different phosphorus. So, these two isomers are there and in this one, this would be coupled with these two. So, that means we should know the fact that PF coupling is larger and also it is one bond, it first splits into a doublet here and then each doublet will be split into a triplet because of this one. So, we should get triplet of triplets here. So, each one will be against the triplet because two are there. So, triplet of triplet here. This is for this isomer for say A and then this is for B, this is for P, B here. These two will be coupling first with phosphorus to a doublet and then each line will be further split into 1, 2, 3 j coupling is there. So, 3 j coupling is there, each one will be split into a triplet. So, what we get is a doublet of triplets here. And then if you look into this one here, again this, this will be coupled with these two to first form a triplet and then with fluorine atoms it will split into a triplet here. So, we get triplet of triplet here, the same thing and this one, these two will first couple into fluorine to give a doublet and then each line will be split into doublet, so doublet of doublet. So, we can interpret the data in this fashion for two isomers of N3P3 Cl4 F2. Now, let us look into another example. This is about some reaction that is carried out. We have to identify the product. All the details are given here. An air sensitive tungsten complex WOCO3 tris isotonitrile. This compound can be prepared by taking WOCO6 reflexing in astronitrile for 24 hours in absence of air under argon. It gives the maximum number of carbon monoxide we can get rid of using nitrogen donor centers is only 3. So, we cannot get anything else other than this one. But if we stop the reaction in the beginning or for 2 hours or something like that, probably we may get two substituted, one substituted also. But if we drive the reaction for completion for reflexing for more than 24 hours, we can knock off three carbon monoxide to have a composition something like this three. So, this can be prepared in situ and then it was treated with a bisphosphine, two equivalents of bisphosphine. Okay. Let us not worry what is the bridging group here, two bisphosphines are there. Then we are getting a compound A here. The IR spectrum of A showed three mu CO stretching frequencies at 2040, 2000 and 1950. So, all of them are in the terminal region. So, there is no bridging that indicates we have three terminal carbon monoxide, metal to carbon monoxide bonds. Then 31 PNMR spectrum shown below relative intensities are 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, we are getting this pattern here, one doublet, one is a doublet, another one is triplet of doublets. So, that means how to arrive at this. So, we have to deduce the structure and then interpret the data given here. It retains octahedral geometry. Possibly because it is a bidentate ligand. 
it has a tendency to form chelation, uh, thermodynamically favored one. And another phosphorus is also bound. So, here unless the coordination is expanded to 7, it cannot bind. Let us assume it is not expanded to coordination number 7. So, in that case what happens? One should be uncoordinated. This is coordinated, this is coordinated, this is coordinated. So, now if we just look into this compound here, this one would only couple with this one to show a doublet and also is uncoordinated. Uncoordinated show a chemical shift very close to the that of the free ligand and free ligand value is also given 62 ppm. So, possibly this one for P uncoordinated. So, now this is chelated CHI would represent. Now, we have to see this one. So, this one can coordinate, it is coordinated, it can couple with this one as well as this one because both are two bond apart. So, in this case, first it couples with this one a triplet and then it shows a doublet. So, that means it should be something like this. So, now other option is it can show first a doublet and it can show a triplet here. Then it should be. Now, we have to compare which pattern is given. This pattern corresponds to this one. So, this is correct. So, first it couples with this coordinated one, chelated ones and then these two chelated ones are chemical and magnetically equivalent. They couple only with this one. It shows a doublet here, a two intensity. So, this is one, this is one, this is one. So, now it is done. So, this one uh, for P C chelated ones and then this is for P C from the monoinitate ligand dangling one and this is for uncoordinated one. So, this so interpretation is done here. Okay. So, now I should tell you something about rule of 13 and to understand the mass only if molecular weight is given, is it possible to arrive at the molecular formula? Yes, it is possible. And we have to have little bit of hint from uh, one or the other spectroscopic, but nevertheless we can distinguish and possibly we can write several structural formula and from that one we can compare once we have some data obtained from one of these spectral methods or more of them. Okay, let us look into what is this rule of 13 is very, very important uh, to arrive at the molecular formula for a given mass identified from mass spectrometry. So, what we have to do is once when we get m plus or m divided by 13, it may or may not be completely divided. We get the quotient and also the remainder. In that case, what happens? Let us take say we divide by n and then n plus r we should put here, n, n is the quotient here and n is quotient plus whatever the remainder. So, this would make the first basic formula and from that one we can check here. For example, let us say 78 is there to begin with. Before we add some heteroatoms, I would come back to that one later. Let us say 78, 78 let us divide by 13, we get 6. That means it is completely divided. So, if you use C, this is equal to N. So, C 6 has 6, this is 72 plus 6, 78. So, we can say without anything, this is the benzene molecule. Now, let us look into 92 here. 92, 92 by 3. So, 7, remainder is 1. So, C7 H7 plus 1 equal C7 H8. This is yes, we have C7 H8 here, cycloheptatriene. Now, we have 161. 161. What we get is So, we get 5 extra. So, we get this is 17 here. So, this is the formula for a molecule. So, now we have to work out again using another formula that is hydrogen deficiency index. So, that also we can use it. So, I will come back to those things in uh, next couple of problems. Now, the question is this is fine, it is aliphatic or aromatic hydrocarbons. What would happen if you have heteroatoms? 
first derive formula as above. So, first we have to find out this one is h and n plus r, r can be 0 or any number. Uh, once after identifying that one, we have to see whether any other heteroatoms are there. If oxygen is there, oxygen atomic weight is 16, 1, 12 carbon is 12. So, you eliminate one CH4 to add one oxygen atom. To add one oxygen atom, you eliminate 16, that is CH4. So, next if you have nitrogen, and nitrogen means atomic weight 14, you have to eliminate CH2 to add nitrogen or subtract 14 to add nitrogen. And if you have both O and N, then we have to go for C2H6, C2H6 we have to add here. And then if you have 19F, 19F is 12 plus 7, 19, we have to subtract or take away CH7 to replace 19F and then 28 silicon, we have to take out C2H4 is 24 plus 4, 28. And then 31P, we have to take out C2H7. And then 32S, we have to take out C2H8. We have to take out from the actual formula we get after rule 13. This 24 plus 8. And then if we have OS, we have to take out 4 carbon atoms. And then if we have chlorine, we have to take out C2H11. And if we do not have sufficient hydrogen atoms, for we can we can also do this one: take out uh, three carbon atoms and add additional hydrogen atom. For example, if one more one chlorine, you can either take out C two H eleven or uh, add one H and take out three carbons. That means C L H you add and take out C three. C L H you add and take C three. And then bromine is there. You can take C six H seven will come around seventy nine. Or if you consider E eighty. Then you have to take C6H8 and 127 iodine, you can take C10H7. So, how do we know those things? By simply looking into the parent ion fragmentation, we can see, for example, whether it is M, M plus 2, M plus 4, immediately that can tell you about the presence of halides. This already we discussed while dealing with mass spectrometry. So, remember from there and you use this simple formula and then after arriving at the molecular formula, what we should do is we can go for identifying whether it is saturated or unsaturated, how many rings are there, how many double bonds are there, and then whether any CO group is there, that information comes from either IR spectroscopy. So, we should proceed like that. So, again, I am telling you. So, for example, we take 108 here, 108 if we take it, 108 divided by 13, so it will be 4 will be left, so 8 and H12. If you do it, 104 plus 4 will be left. So, it will be 12. Okay, so, this is it. So, that means possible candidates with heteroatoms. So, here take this one, remove one CH4, add it can be C7H8O or take out two CH4 and add O2, it can be C6H4O2 or you can add two CH2, remove CH4 and CH2O and N. It can be something like this. So, we can work out all possible ways to arrive at the right kind of structural formula by having help from the data we have obtained from various spectroscopic means for an unknown sample. Nitrogen rule is also there. A molecule with even numbered molecular weight must contain either no nitrogen or even number of nitrogen. So, that means if the molecular weight is even, in that case it should have nitrogen only in the even number or it should not have any nitrogen. And if the odd numbered molecular weight is there, it must have odd number of nitrogen only, not even number of nitrogen. This also information also quite helpful in, for example, when you go for proteins and other amino acids and other things where possibility of more are there, we can use this rule. So, molecular weight is even, only even number of nitrogen atoms will be there or there will be no nitrogen atoms. When odd number is there, there has to be odd number of nitrogen atoms. So, with this again showing you consolidating here, divide the molecular weight by 13 and remainder less than 13 has to be there is termed as R and the quotient is N. So, the, the molecular formula is Cn, Hn plus R here and then elements of unsaturation may found out from the molecular formula. If O is there, add O and subtract CH4. If N is there, add N and subtract CH2. Again, remember this odd and even molecular weight. And if Cl is there, add Cl and subtract C2H11 or subtract C3H minus 1. That means, add one more H and take out three carbon atoms. 
after obtaining correct molecular formula find out hydrogen deficiency index using this formula here C plus 1 minus half into all H plus half X, X is halogen and plus half M. With this one we can arrive at molecular formula and also about its saturation or unsaturation and the presence of a aromatic group or so. A ring, I would say aromatic group, there can be aliphatic ring can also be there. So, now let us look into problem here. A compound composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen has a molecular weight, uh, molecular ion at m by z equals 112 in its mass spectrum. The base peak is at m by z equals 28 atomic mass units. The infrared spectrum shows a strong absorption in the region 2850 to 2980, very strong absorption at 1717, very strong absorption at 1717 centimeter minus 1. The 1H NMR spectrum shows a single sharp signal at 2.7 ppm and 13C NMR also has two signals at 37 and 208 ppm. So, this one we should take here, first 112 is there, 112 divided by 13 equals what we get is it is 104, 104 and then another 8 will be left. So, it becomes C8H16 and now since uh, it says 1717 there is strong absorption probably one or more CO groups can be there. Now, let us try both options. First, let us add one oxygen for adding we have to remove CH4. So, for this what we do C7H12O and now we can try to remove one more because it is strong it says C 6 H 8 O 2. So, now with this one let us identify, let us assume this is the correct uh, molecular formula. Now, let us look into hydrogen index deficiency. So, 6 are there, 6 plus 1 minus 4, so 3 are there. So, 3 means basically ring plus 2 double bonds, so, 1 ring and 2 double bonds are there. This indicates the ring may not have inside double bonds. So, in this case and then we are seeing around 2.7, 2.7 does not fit into aromatic hydrogen 1HNMR signal. So, that means possibly it is not an aromatic ring. 6 are there, let us try to write something like this, CH2, CH2, okay. let us assume because if we write something like this. C8 are there, 8 is satisfied and 6 are there and then O2, then possibly this one. So, now this is symmetric and they show only one sharp signal at 2.7. Any other possibility is there, something like this. So, then also it is symmetric, but what, what happens here, 1 is there and these 2 on this. So, they are all different 1 to 3 signals we get it in 1 H NMR and another possibility is and possibility is this one and also if you do like this, this one and this one are identical and we get two type of signals here. So, that means these two are not possible, this is possible here and probably the structure is something like this. Now, I have taken for this one here, you can see we are seeing only one signal here at 2.73, we are very close to seeing so yes this is this compound, it is confirmed from 1 H NMR. Let us look into now 13 C, 13 C shows only two signals, one is this one, one is this one here 208 and 36.5. The molecule what we predicted is correct by using 13 rule number 13 and also hydrogen deficiency index with these two and also getting some vital information from IR spectroscopy and also uh, NMR. We now, we without any problem, we identified the right product. So, this is how we can combine all information and also use the empirical information, empirical formula that are given by people who have worked thoroughly with this kind of spectroscopic methods. We can arrive at the structures easily. So, let me come back with more problems in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time. Thank you.